Good morning and welcome to Wednesday morning's thought for today. We're still with uh, Jesus as he's going through his baptismal experience. How after his baptism, God then affirmed him through the, the Holy Spirit coming down upon him. And then God uh, ripping open the heavens and speaking to him directly in front of everybody. Almost this personal conversation that God had with his own son. And yet the world, those who were there were, were privy to this conversation. And I can only imagine the, the talk that went on around after uh, this had happened. Uh, very often in life, when you have a, a spiritual experience where you've gone through a period of very intense uh, time either serving the Lord, very often it could be through, for example, a holiday Bible club or through running a, an Alpha course or Christianity Explored or during those times of, of maybe six, eight weeks or whatever, uh, there's this wonderful intense period of being so close to the Lord, doing your, your readings every day, reading a book that goes along with it, working with other Christians, all pulling in the same direction. And yet very often when that, when that comes to an end, as these things inevi inevitably do, because very often they are short term things which are created as an impact to get other things to start moving. But very often if you've been involved at the height of that and, and the center of all that, once that stops, there's a temptation then to feel yourself almost going down uh, into a valley, into a, a, a place that is, is very different from the, the height of the hill that you were on when everyone was praising God and working together. And that was uh, a wonderful sense of blessing. Very often the Christian life is full of those moments where there are spiritual highs and all too often those spiritual highs are, are replaced with spiritual lows and we go through a period of just not feeling that as, as you did beforehand because the, the intensity isn't there and if you read through the old testament you find times when that happened if you think of elijah how elijah was on top of the mountain with all the false prophets and he called down god's power and the, the sacrifice was burnt up and all the prophets were killed and all of a sudden he then finds himself running again and he ends up in a cave and he ends up saying i'm the only one who's left to poor me and yet he'd gone through the most intense, incredible experience with the Lord. And here in, in Mark's gospel, there's, a, there's a something similar here. There's a sense where Jesus has gone through this moment of baptism, which was uh, in one sense a very human thing that he allowed himself to go through to be identified with the people he came to save. But also immediately after that, Mark tells us the, the heavens were ripped open, the Spirit came down, he had the the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit in this human body that he was in. And then God speaks from heaven, affirms who he is and gives him his blessing in front of everyone. You're not going to get much better than that. That is the highest anyone could ever hope for. And so Jesus, in a human sense, is at a peak. There's this moment where he's spiritually intense and things are going so well for him. And then Mark drops in this word, which you, you will hear again and again and again in Mark's gospel. It's almost as if Mark's writing in a hurry because he says, uh, after he, he said this, the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Uh, if you look up at verse 10, he said, and when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being opened. So Mark loves using the word immediately. There's a sense of urgency and things are always moving on with Mark. He doesn't tarry terribly long and uh, draw out a story any further than is necessary. But here he says, after Jesus' baptism, immediately the Spirit drives him out into the wilderness. Now, the word that's used for the be translated here is drives, is a sense of being uh, pushed out, being, uh, in a sense, shoved, if you like, into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit is within the Lord. And after it's all over, we don't know for how long the, the period was between the Holy Spirit driving him out and the end of the baptism. But Mark says immediately, there's this sense that Jesus is basically said, OK, let's put all this to the test. You've now had God's blessing on you. You've had that affirmation of the Holy Spirit within you. You've got all you need. Let's put it to the test. Let's see if the, the man part of you can withstand what's going to happen next, because this is the start of your ministry. So from a peak to a low, out into the, 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 the wilderness where there were wild animals and where Satan would then come to tempt him three times. And we'll think a little bit about those temptations tomorrow. But what does this mean, this, this idea of the Holy Spirit driving him out, shoving him out, pushing him out into the wilderness? Well, Jesus was very perceptive to the, the Holy Spirit's prompting in his life. 
He was part of the Godhead with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ and therefore they were working together. And the Holy Spirit was compelling him to say, okay, you've had your baptism, you've had your affirmation. Now we need to get this, this ministry moving. We need to put this to the test. We need to see if you're up to this, this temptation. And we know Jesus was up to it. We know it wasn't easy for him, so much so that angels had to come and minister to him. He was that exhausted. It, the, the angels didn't come and, and feed him food and, and give him drink. They came and ministered to him spiritually because it was exhausting. But there was this sense that the Holy Spirit said, this is it. Let's get out here. Let's put this to the test. And the Holy Spirit, when he moves in our lives, we know it's from God. And, but we, we also need to know that we have the power of God to do whatever God asks us to do. And sometimes we, we hear that voice saying, go and visit so-and-so. Go and give somebody a call. Go and send them a card. Just go and, and do what you, you believe God is saying you to do, asking you to do and saying to you to do because there's a sense that you are the one God wants to do. And, and, and whenever we don't do those things, we sometimes live to regret it. And we say to ourselves, I know that God was saying I should have done this and I didn't do it. The Holy Spirit prompting. If we start every day asking the Lord to come and to fill our lives and to inspire us and to guide us and to show us the things he wants us to do and then ignore them when the Holy Spirit prompts us, then what's the point in us starting the day like that? Every day I want to encourage you to start the day saying, Holy Spirit of God, give me the strength today to know first of all what it is you're asking me to do, but secondly, to do the things I know you're asking me to do. Forgive me for going on a little bit too long today. I have so much to say. I'm speaking far too fast, but hopefully I'll see you at the prayer meeting tonight. God bless you.